in with Bedlam. Let's in with Bedlam, too. It's Jake Hager, the Oklahoma Sooner, who's matched up against him. Sixth ranked in the nation. Jake Hager is a senior. He's really developed the last couple years as a wrestler. Has a shot to be an All-American this year. Hasn't had any answers for Mako in the two previous meetings this year. Got pinned on a foot sweep takedown. Half Nelson turned him over, pinned him in the first duel. Kept it to 8-1 to one in the second duel, but uh, frankly just very ultra-conservative and almost like a guy is trying to not lose as badly as instead of going after it. Uh, Jack Spates says if he's going to beat Steve Mako, he's got to get really good hand fighting, keep his position, be tough, stay away from the foot sweep, which is one of Mako's trademarks. He's played on the football team at OU for a couple of years. Now Mako, of course, his first couple of years in college at the University of Iowa. Not exactly a fan favorite among these parts, uh, but uh, he won the NCAA championship in 03 as a sophomore, took a year off, an Olympic red shirt, finished third at the Olympic trials, and then last year, of course, won a national championship at OSU. So he's had a runner-up finish in two NCAA titles now, and was number one going in, but has lost a couple of times to Cole Conrad from Minnesota, who's the new number one, and they're expected to have another battle. There's a nice headlock by Mako, which allows him to post the head, get behind Hager, and trying to elevate him. Jacob is a big, long wrestler, though. Hard for a shorter man to pick up the tall man and get the leverage he needs, but Mako just about had it done, but not quite. And there he gets the two. Nice job by Mako to hang with him. Hager from that great Perry, Oklahoma program. It's just won its, uh, I believe, 32nd state title last weekend in Oklahoma City. And Jacob, 25-4, uh, and, and as we said, ranked sixth. Steve Mako, 22-2 with the two losses to Cole Conrad. Trying to become a three-time champ and a four-time finalist. There have only been about uh, 10 four-time finalists in NCAA history. Runs Hager off the mat, uh, trying to make sure he gets through the next little bit without giving up the escape, and then to see if he can work for a turn. Hager, on the other hand, of course, cannot afford to stay down too long. Heavyweights tend to get really tired if they're ridden very long. Trying to move all that weight around. Hager beat John May of Nebraska in the semifinal, and they end up winning the third place match. To your feet now, to your feet. Now, nice job getting back to his feet. Mako turns it almost in reverse by Hager. If he could have done it a little sooner, he would have had two right there. But they got off just before Hager spun around. That was a good move under him. Mako, like uh, several wrestlers out of the Great Blair Academy program, it's a prep school in New Jersey. And specialize in wrestling. They have a lot of wrestlers coming from out of state that want to wrestle there and wrestle that schedule. And Zach Esposito, a player product. You could just go on and on and name the All-Americans that have come out of there. Damian Hunt from Minnesota, national champion, and so many others. Very competitive program. In fact, Kurt Backus tonight from Iowa State. He's from there, too. It's, it's almost unfair when they wrestle other high schools because they have the standouts from multiple states come in to go to school and wrestle there. That sounds like it's not almost unfair. Yeah, it sounds like it is. It's kind of like an all-star <laughs> team, you know, basically. Uh -huh. and, uh, very tough for a normal high school to compete with that. Period running down. Mako just uh, content to ride and put some pressure on Hager, maybe try to wear him out. But Hager showing good leg action there. is able to bounce up and almost get away. Final 10 seconds here of the first period, and Mako with a 2 0 lead right now. On top of Jake Hager. And that'll do it for the first period. We're back with period number two of the heavyweight battle in a moment here on FSN. Welcome back to Ames, Iowa. Bill Jones along with. J. Carl Guyman, it's the heavyweight matchup, and Steve Mako, the Oklahoma State Cowboy, with a 2-0 advantage, 3-1 over Jake Hager. 
Hager's choice to start the second, but he deferred the choice, so Marco chose bottom and quickly gets away to build the lead to 3-0, but Hager doing a nice job hanging around in this match so far. Just one takedown, and he'd be right back in it. See if he can get some offense generated. Try to upset the three-time NCAA finalist, two-time champion. Mako uh, has very good footwork. He's, of course, a, a great judo athlete and has very good footwork because of that. So he's quick with his feet, where the foot sweep comes from. Low center of gravity, very, very short, powerfully built. It's hard to get in on the leg on him from a quickness standpoint. And even if you, even if you do, he can get those hips back very quickly. Hager's best shot, you know, frankly, is is for Mako to get overly aggressive and make a bad shot, and Hager take advantage of that. There's the headlock by Mako, and he's been had some success in the past by posting that head, and then he'll either head snap or just work his way to the corner a lot of times on Hager. Come to your feet, come to your feet. There you go. Oh, Hager though reaches for the leg off the headlock. Nice job by Hager, but nothing there. Good counter though. Joe Mako Sr., it's uh, Steve Mako's dad. Which trips to a lot of the matches from back in North Bergen, New Jersey. A lot of frequent flyer miles there. Oh boy, uh, well actually frequent van miles. Oh is it? The, the old dangerous white van, I saw it in the parking lot, it's here. <laughs> the one that exploded in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's back in action. It's like a Madden Cruiser, it's the Mako Cruiser. Oh, yes. Mako Mobile. Mako Mobile is rolling on here through two periods now as Mako has the 3 nothing advantage on Hager through two. And let's see if Hager goes underneath or if he chooses neutral. He's going to go down, I think. Two minutes, He's choose neutral because Mako can ride really well when he wants to. Young, uh, younger Joe Mako, uh, Steve's brother and Joe Mako's other son, he's usually around here somewhere. I'm not sure he's here. He looks like Joe Mako Sr. looks like a dad that Likes to pace, can't sit down during Sun's match. Mako with a nice ride so far. Of course, he's built some time already, so his riding time's already over a minute and a half and a three-nothing lead. Just kind of cruising along here. Not uh, not as devastating as he been with has been with Hager in other matches, but Hager has just had an awfully hard time generating offense against Steve Mako. And, and most heavyweights do, obviously, because he's very good on his feet, very quick footed. Good balance. So fans in Oklahoma City, if it comes to another matchup between Mako and Cole Conrad from Minnesota, that ought to be something. Now, uh, Jay Carl, you'll be covering your 35th NCAA championship. And it's going to be terrific in Oklahoma City hosting it this year. Well, Oklahoma City with the Ford Center, it's a great arena. And, of course, it's the home right now most of the season for the, the Hornets and the NBA, uh, the, the New Orleans, Oklahoma City. Hornets, I guess, as they're calling them. And uh, with Bricktown, the way it's grown, is Hager gets the escape to make it 3-1. Bricktown area, great restaurants, clubs, hotels right there. I think the fans will really have a good experience there. And it probably will set the attendance record for the NCAA tournament as far as total attendance. Under a minute to go, three to one. Hager's still in this match, even though riding time is since, so it's actually four to one. But Hager's still in the match and has done a nice job, and Mako has been just kind of plodding here. Hager's starting to pick up the pace a little bit because he realizes, hey, I got a shot here. I could get something going. I've got a chance. Thirty-five seconds. Hager trying to pick up the pace. Can't get to the legs, however. Mako, a good defensive wrestler with that athletic ability that you're talking about. It's difficult. Very, very quick. And, and again, though, Mako not being very aggressive this period, seemingly content just to take the four to one lead and go to the house, basically. So the final seconds here of the heavyweight matchup. And the Oklahoma State Cowboys, Steve Mako, makes it four Big 12 champions.
for the Cowboys who reign supreme once again here at the Big 12 meet. And Steve Mako will see you in Oklahoma City. He's the winner of the heavyweight class 4-1.